Welcome to the Weasley Update. I am Aiden Weiss. I'm getting fucking sauced. And I am, as always, ready to fucking ramble. Sitting here with me is... Uh, I believe it's a lemon drop. Um, I don't know fancy drinks. I don't really drink a lot. But uh, upon my request, since I'm doing this, my mom whipped me up something. And it looks very fancy. I think it's like lemonade, vodka, Ciroc, and then like... I don't know, some fucking sugar around the edge. It makes me feel very, very fancy. Uh, mentally, but it makes my body fucking quiver. Because I'm a pussy when it comes to drinks. So, I am going to fucking pound a little bit of this right now. Whoop, whoop. Oh. That's actually pretty fucking good. I'm not gonna lie, she did a pretty good job. Oh, jeez. I asked her what it was called so I could fucking act like I knew what I was talking about on here. And she was like, oh, it's a lemon drop. Let me know when you need another. I was like, oh, I do not need another. What I need is to drink more fucking water, dude. I do not put enough fucking water in my system. I'll tell you what, though. I drink a ton of fucking milk. Um, I've actually been scolded for that. A number of fucking times. People say all the time, Yeah, we're the only animal that drinks another animal's milks. And I'm gonna say what everyone else has already responded to that. Yeah, we're also the only fucking animals that have the ability to record podcasts or drive cars or do any sort of fucking thing. I, that, that is the stupidest fucking argument I have ever heard. Um... But people are entitled to their own opinions. If they think that's weird, I mean, I, I think it is weird. If you objectively look at that, it is weird that one animal drinks another animal's milk. But it has incredible nutritional value. And it's this weird thing because fucking when, when I was born, people were saying you should only have kids on milk for a long time. Oh, I'm taking another drink of this. Mm. Oh my god, that sugar really fucking does me in. <laughs> Gotta chase it with water because I'm a fucking hell ass. And I'm gonna hit my goddamn dampen. Oh, so much sugar on my lip. What the fuck, dude? Oh, I didn't even say this is uh this is episode nine. Man, I'm sort of slacking here. We are on episode nine. This is recorded on March 31st of 2020. It will be posted tomorrow on April Fool's Day. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Nine episodes. I feel really good about that. One of my 2020 goals was to reach 10 episodes just because I I read somewhere most podcasts don't get to like five or some something like that. And so I was like, I'm, I'm going to set my goal to be double that. And, um, you know, I'm not going to count my eggs before they hatch. But here we are. Episode nine, baby. Let's fucking do this shit. I'm going to rip my dab pen. As I said the last episode, I picked up a cartridge called Jack Skellington. And it has been doing me really, really well. I don't know what kind of cartridge my dad has right now, but holy fuck does it taste good. The flavor, the smell is so awesome. I've only had one... Uh, excuse me. Disgusting. I have only had um, one cartridge... In my lifetime, that was truly just splendid to hit. Because, oh, Jesus, got the hiccups. Ask anybody who's ever ripped a dab pen, even the most seasoned smokers, that shit will fuck up your throat. And fuck up your lungs for a good amount of time. I, uh, you know, right, I was watching Lord of the Rings last night with my family, which I'll get to. Um, and right before the, we fucking queued it up, I, uh, you know, I took a blinker. I just held to the fucking button down until it, it won't go anymore. Until the button blinks. And um, and I was coughing so hard. My mom was like, oh my god. Do you need your inhaler? I'm like, no. She didn't sound like that. She was far less concerned. But she did ask me if I needed my inhaler. I don't know why I felt the need to uh, dramatize that. Is that a word? Dramatize? Dramatize? That doesn't seem right either. I'm a fucking dumbass, dude. Oh my god, anyways, I'm gonna rip this shit. Should I even try to take a blink? It's just like, there's gonna be so much dead time of me fucking 
coughing. Ah, fuck it. Here we go. That was like some fucking uh, panda shit. Who's the dude who did that? Designer? With two eyes? Blah, 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 blah. I have worlds in Atlanta. Fuck it. I was so into that song when it came out. And I knew then how fucking stupid it was, but that song's just so stupid. And I love it for that reason. Gonna crack the door open, or the window, I mean. Here we go. actually not as bad as I anticipated it being. Oh, how excellent that made my body feel. All right, man, we have got some shit to fucking talk about. It's just like so much fucking going on right now. <coughs> oh my God. This coronavirus shit is just, uh, it's pretty spooky, man. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still fucking dying over here. I'll tell you what, though, I love the Cardi B memes that have come out of this. I fucking love them. There have been a few... <coughs> oh my god, I'm still fucking dying. And, uh... <coughs> oh my god. I just think she's so fucking funny. Um, coronavirus! Like, that shit just fucking cracks me up. There's another meme about fucking her seeing aliens that just cracks me up. I'm not gonna try to articulate how funny a meme is over fucking audio but if you have not seen the cardi b coronavirus shit you are fucking missing out my voice is so shaky I'm trying to hold it and cough <coughs> so much shit is getting fucking shut down in like the cinematic world man moving tv productions are just on halt um there are Holy fuck, I can't believe that. I'm still coughing. <coughs> there's uh, there's definitely a number of uh, movies, though, that aren't getting delayed because they're late enough in production that they can be just doing shit remotely from home or early enough in production. Like, I know Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is in pre-production, and so they are still able to um, get that shit done from home i don't know how much they can get done from home because i don't know what all you know makes up pre-production but i assume a pretty important part of that has to do with scheduling and you know schedules are just up in the air right now um but it is nice to know that there is still some momentum behind that movie because fuck me am i pumped especially now that sam raimi's directing it if you don't know who sam raimi is he directed the og spider-man trilogy which I still love. I recognize... I, I know they're weird and bad. But I, I still love them. And he's also done uh, horror stuff. Like Evil Dead, which is a movie I am such a big fucking fan of, dude. I was, like, obsessed with that movie for a little while. He did it on a tiny, tiny budget with some of his friends. Including Bruce Campbell, who, uh, who still, like... I think cameos and like everything he does. He was even in that fucking Oz, the great and powerful movie with a little, for a little bit. Um, the one with James Franco and Mila Kunis. I think Mila Kunis played the wicked witch of the West. I haven't seen that in a while, but, uh, but I, I remember being into it at the time. Um, so Sam Raimi definitely seems like a pretty good fit for like a weird sort of darker, uh, Marvel movie, because one, he's already done Spider-Man, he, he, I mean, fuck, X-Men probably came out in 2000, Spider-Man came out in 2002, probably, um, and so I don't want to say he, like, started the superhero movie stuff, but he was one of the first, you know, I guess Blade came out, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, but Spider-Man is one of the most successful, like, it, it was definitely a jumping point, 
for all of that shit. And I think that if Sam Raimi didn't make the Spider-Man trilogy, we wouldn't be where we're at with superhero movies right now. Um, so at the very least, you got to give them credit there. But they said right from the beginning that this Doctor Strange was going to be um, a little bit more horror than their other films. People just fucking misquoted the fuck out of the interview. And we're like, it's going to be the first marvel horror movie myself included i was guilty of that um but no it's not going to be a horror movie but it is definitely going to be a little bit spookier the bad guy's named nightmare so i mean that should give you an idea of what it's going to be like but i'm yeah i'm super pumped for that it was uh i believe the guy's name is like scott derrickson he did the first one and he has also done horror movies if i'm not mistaken he did um sinister with Ethan Hawke, which is funny because I think Ethan Hawke would have been an awesome Doctor Strange. Uh, whatever movie had, like, Bagul or some fucking shit like that. It, it was really good. I liked that movie. But he dropped out and is still a producer, and um, they hired Sam Raimi. I am so fucking pumped, man. I mean, they, they remade Evil Dead. Let's see. When did they remake Evil Dead? I'm going to look this up right now. It was pretty good, but it wasn't successful. Uh... And they made the, like, it's not, like, a carbon copy of the original. There's new characters. But they made the equivalent of his character a chick, and people were so fucking pissed off. Evil Dead. Okay, so there was The Evil Dead, which came out in... Man, holy shit. Made fucking 29.4 million. That That is crazy. No way that had a fucking 350... Th that's wrong. That is... That can't be right. $350,000. I, I straight up don't believe that. And... There, no. There's no fucking way. Because why people loved that movie was because of the budget it was done on. Okay. 1981 is when that movie came out. And they remade it in 2013. And I wouldn't quite say it was scary, but it was definitely intense. It was intense as fuck dude um really just up in your face like there was once it starts going there is no stopping and it is incredibly gory uh people uh, i mean there was a chick in the theater fucking crying with me god it's fucking gory but you know it it didn't do super well unfortunately um i think so the the premise is that it's like these uh, these five or so friends like go out to uh that's that's my dad if you if, in case you haven't picked up by now i'm fucking it's a little noisier because i'm at home i left good old be him anyways it's uh it's like five friends or so go up to a cabin and basically some haunted shit goes down but it's good and then they made a second one called evil dead not the evil dead um and it was also good really liked it but it's like slapstick horror like three stooges meets a horror movie the, the dude literally has a fucking chainsaw hand so it's pretty ridiculous and then they made an even more ridiculous uh uh third one to cap off the trilogy called army of darkness that i also really liked there was this fucking f uh phone game on my old ipod touch i i just used to go so fucking hard on it it was insanely fun um and that, there was, like, time travel in that to medieval shit. It was, it's ridiculous. But I, I still love it, none, nonetheless. Um, and that's, like, what made me really like Sam Raimi. But god damn it, dude, those Spider-Man movies, it's the soundtrack. I think Danny Elfman did the soundtrack, and oh my god, it, it rocks my fucking world. You can't tell me that soundtrack's not great. I'm playing it in my head right now, and it's, it's just so memorable, each little part. But that, that's Danny Elfman for you. Let's let's look at Danny Elfman's um, discography. Would that be the right word? I, I mean, he did Nightmare Before Christmas, which is, if you know anything about me, you know that's one of my favorite fucking movies of all time. Oh, so He actually did Jack Skellington singing because the actor Chris Sarandon couldn't. Danny Elfman. Oh, so He looks sort of like Elton John. Oh, he did do a little. I didn't see that, but I heard it was fucking shitty. He did Fifty Shades Darker. 
You're fucking me. That's hilarious. Men in Black International Doctor Seuss. All right, this is all modern shit. I don't even know. Fifty Shades Freed. He did do Justice League, but I think that was like, I think that was controversial because maybe Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL were gonna do the original. I'm honestly not sure, but that reminds me. I'm gonna write down Batman v Superman soundtrack because I wanted to listen to that yesterday, but fucking forgot. I think that is Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL. Girl on the Train. He's done a ton of shit, dude. Oh my god, when is this guy not working? Holy shit. It's weird to me he did a fucking Fifty Shades movies. He did do Oz the Great and Powerful. Hitchcock, Silver Linings, Playbook. Dark Shadows. That was a funny movie. Real Steel. Oh, fuck me. He did Wolfman. If you have not seen 2010's The Wolfman with Benicio Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins um, and Emily Blunt... Then do yourself a favor and fucking watch that. One of the best modern horror movies, in my opinion. God damn it, what an excellent movie. He also did Alice in Wonderland. Uh, oh, who directed that? Tim Burton, I think. Uh, Hellboy. Yeah, he does a lot of weird shit. Charlotte's Web. I forgot about that. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Corpse's Bride. Sleepy Hollow. Another excellent movie. Um, with Johnny Depp. If you haven't seen that, you should fucking yeah he, he oh that was loud he batman that's right he did the fucking og batman movies this guy definitely has uh uh he he works a lot with tim burton and sam Raimi. god damn i, I love his music he just has su uh such a fucking recognizable aesthetic but he still brings a fresh palette to each film you know, when you listen to the Batman soundtrack, you immediately know that's Danny Elfman. But you also know, like, like for me at least, when I hear the fucking Batman soundtrack, I can vision, I can envision, fucking Tim Burton's Gotham. Um, and and same with the fucking Spider-Man soundtrack. I just like can envision Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man swinging around in New York. He he's an excellent, excellent composer. Um, but other than I, I mean, I know Doctor Strange is in pre-production, but stuff like Eternals, another Marvel movie, which stars two of the Game of Thrones Stark brothers, which I'm very pumped about, John Madden, who played... Uh, excuse me, Jesus Christ. John, or Richard Madden, I mean. Richard Madden is going to be in it. I think his character's name is Icarus. Uh, and he, on Game of Thrones, played Rob Stark, one of my favorite characters. And also Kit Harrington, who famously plays Jon Snow on Game of Thrones, will be in that film. And the rumor is there's going to be a love triangle with those two characters. Oh, no. Oh, God. Who's hitting me up? Woo. All right. I'm taking another drink of this fucking margarita. Or whatever. Lemon drop? I don't know. Oh, Jesus. I can't believe she expected me to have another one of these. Um, But Eternals was... I think they're like in the pretty late post-production stages or at least in post-production because they're also able to continue working on the movie remotely because i think at this point it's mostly just cg and dubbing stuff over and that sort of thing uh i'm pretty pumped or pretty the opposite of pumped i don't know why the fuck i said that i'm pretty bummed about some of these delays though because i wanted to see black widow pretty bad one, because it's the newest installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Blech. And two, uh, I love Scarlett Johansson. And three, fucking Taskmaster is in it. I've waited for them to bust that fucking character off the shelf, dust him off. He's in all sorts of other shit. Video games, uh, comics, TV, and it took him this long. But I'm just pumped they're finally using him. And I'm just pumped to uh, to get some more fucking ScarJo as Black Widow, dude. I really... Plus, you know, like I said, it's the next installment of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And even if it's a prequel, you know there's going to be something. Like, it's the first movie after Avengers Endgame. So there's going to be something to um, keep, you know, keep the momentum of the entire franchise moving. 
So I was pretty bummed that got, that got delayed, but the week it was so supposed to be released, God, I'm stuttering. So did um, Quiet Place 2, which I was also super, super, super pumped to see. I really liked the first one. That's another film soundtrack I have on my phone. The dude who did that, his name, I think his first name's Marco. Let me look it up. He also did the Logan soundtrack, which I've said probably a hundred fucking times on here is my favorite movie. Let's look. Quiet Place. Marco Beltrami? Beltrami, maybe? I, I don't know. I'm so shitty at pronouncing names. So shitty. I'm just really shitty at remembering names, too. Oh, geez. I forgot to reply. Oh, my God. You've got a GameCube? Wow. God damn it, I wish I still had a fucking GameCube. I loved that thing so much. I, all my favorite video games ever. Well, no. That's a lie, because Spider-Man is... That Spider-Man PS4 game is so much fun. And I played it for the first time in forever today. Uh, and I just fucking forgot how incredible it was i woke up this morning because my little niece hit her head or something she got a little noggin she came into my room and woke me up and was like aiden aiden and i was like yeah she was like play spider-man and i was like yeah <laughs> yeah i will so we went and grabbed her controller that didn't work and i just fucking you know queued up spider-man kicked some ass for a little bit and that game is just so much fucking fun it's unreal how they did it Unreal. I've actually, since this quarantine shit, been playing a, a good amount of video games. Mostly, I've been playing fucking COD, man. Call of Duty. I, you know, I didn't buy it, but I downloaded Warzone. They have a new Battle Royale. And you probably do if you're listening to this, because you're probably, like, know me. Um, but if you don't know what a bal Battle Royale is, the, the most famous ex example is Fortnite. And the idea is that it's so many people on one big map and it's all online and basically you get dropped out of an airplane or the fucking bus on fortnite or whatever it is you get dropped from the sky each round into this giant map and you, when you land you have to find gear so it's not like you can just go into a round with your own gear and perks and shit like you have to you start each everyone starts each round fair no one everyone's the same and you drop down and you have to find all this shit, and um, it's just like last person standing wins. And the idea is that the map shrinks down. So again, it's fucking different no matter what you're playing. What was the other one people were into? Apex. It's like the, you know, in fucking Call of Duty, it's a gas. I, I don't know what it is in Apex. It was the storm in Fortnite, but it's like the the you know, the map slowly shrinks down, and if you're on the outside of these boundaries, then uh, you get killed by, like, the gas or storm or whatever. Um, so it's constantly shrinking, you know, constantly just consolidating the map. It's, it's a really cool idea. And Call of Duty made their own version, which is called Warzone, and I was like, even if it was going to be shitty, I was like, oh my god, a chance for me and my buddies to just fucking hop on and like talk some shit and play some video games online together that's perfect I, I have so much fun doing that and especially during this quarantine shit where you know everyone i'm like it's it hasn't been dismal that's not the way to put it but you know you really fucking uh take social interaction for granted and this coronavirus shit you know just being inside and not being able to really leave or see my friends it, it really like prompts that that sort of, even if it's just that connection online not even seeing each other's faces just hearing each other talk and fucking playing some stupid pointless video game together that's really fun and so um even like i said even if the game was shitty i was gonna download it so i did and i've been fucking having a blast it's called warzone i think i said that and i've particularly been playing it with my buddy colvin and we have been kicking ass dude I, i'm pretty decent i'm not like great but I, I i get kills every round um on warzone last time i was playing i was getting like five or six kills every round which is pretty good um never really making it far i got to a second one time with colby spectating and it just fucking i uh, shit the bed it was not good but um it's funny because when i came home 
you know, because if I'm quarantining, I don't want to be up in Bellingham. My parents, you know, because I can't fit my snake in my fucking car. Can't fit that giant tank in my tiny little Civic. So my parents really uh, graciously drove up in their van with me the other day to Bellingham. Two hour drive, four hour round trip just to get my pet. I'm very grateful. Um, so we got call and now he's here and I've got all my shit so I can just hunker down and be quarantined with the family. And now they're, they bought the full Call of Duty game. So you can still have Warzone. Warzone is free. But, um, they, they bought the full game, which is, you know, team deathmatch and like all these different modes. So, uh, I have been playing more like split screen with my mom and my dad and my brothers than, uh, than I have been Warzone over the last couple of days, but shit, dude, I've, I've probably logged in two hours of COD every day for the last like four days. And that's at least, and that's just me fucking doing it with my family. Like my mom, the, the, the last at least two nights my mom and i have stayed up playing cod until like two in the morning and then last night my mom and i stayed up even longer after that talking about celebrities with plastic surgery and then dude i watched a fucking episode of tiger king holy fuck holy shit i'm only three episodes in but tiger king is the most fucking wild shit it's like you you think you know what it's gonna be and then it's like oh my god there's a murder plot here then it's like wait did one of these people kill their significant other? Like, excuse me. It's just, it just keeps unraveling in ways that I can't imagine. And the dude it mostly follows, his name is Joe Exotic, is just a character, man. This fucking uber gay, redneck, gun-toting, big cat owner. He owns a zoo. And he talks like this. He's got a ton of peers. It, it's, it's so, so weird. And, like, definitely, with his two husbands, some meth going on there. It's really fucking weird. But anyway, back to the old cod. Yeah, I've, I've been having a blast doing that. It, it's just, uh, it's like endless fun. Because you can just keep playing round after round. And I don't, dude, the, the fucking yesterday at some point I got 20 kills and, like, 6 deaths. I don't, it made me feel really good about myself, even though I didn't actually accomplish anything. But, uh, and that was, that was abnormal for me. I usually do fucking decent. Like, even if I die a lot, I'm still racking in kills. Um, sometimes though, I, I don't know, I'm pretty off and on, I, I guess. Sometimes I just get my fucking shit rocked and it's so frustrating. But it's always fun because, you know, I'm playing with my siblings. And it's not like any of us are super great, except Ryder. Ryder is so good, it's almost more fun to watch him play than it is to actually play. Because he just fucking claps kids time after time. Time after time. Anyways, um, yeah, so it, it's not like, you know, unless you're playing with Ryder that you feel bad about losing. Because the other people you're playing with are doing just as bad or worse, so... Oh my god, we're actually after this going to do some brackets. Set up some 1v1 between the five of us take turns. That is going to be a fucking blast. And I hope to kick some ass. I think, I think I'll do pretty decent, but uh, it is going to be a challenge to take Ryder on. It is going to be fucking rough. Because that, that kid's just good at every video game he plays. He's like my buddy Jake. Every time either of those fucking kids has played a video game, they just pick it up immediately and just start fucking destroying. It's almost disheartening. Like, sometimes, and I love you, Jake, but sometimes playing, like, Fortnite with these guys is, is straight up disheartening. Because you just die, and they are carrying the team so hard that it makes me feel bad for even fucking asking to play with them. Like, dude, I'm holding you back here so hard it's ridiculous which is pretty funny because man back in the day on like the first black ops i remember Ryder and i were just reminiscing over this i remember Ryder and i would play fucking uh zombies online with my buddy leo and he would just get so frustrated with how fucking slow and shitty we were we got so fucked up every round it, it was i mean Leo is better off playing by himself. And I honestly think he was playing with us out of fucking pity. 
because his presence would just i don't know get us out of the first fucking room it was oh my god ridiculous sometimes but uh but we had a lot of fun you know i i don't like the idea of playing video games i always have fun because they're fun dude if you i'd say you're probably being dishonest if you say you're you don't have fun ever playing a video game a phone game or anything like that it's the idea to me of doing it it's like fuck dude i just fucking spent an hour doing something and while you're there in the zone and leveling up and shit you're like oh my god i'm getting so much shit done and busting ass and then you fucking turn it off and put the controller down and you're like i didn't actually do anything i didn't do anything to just progress my day Be like the way i think about everything i need to get done in a day i write down so i can cross it off and just the feeling of spending so much time on one task then putting it down and like turning to my whiteboard and not being able to cross anything off is fucking vexing man so i but but i still do it because i i think that you know it's important to have little shit like that to help decompress for some people it's reading which is definitely better i think um but everyone has their thing and i don't want to make it sound like i fucking play a ton of video games but i definitely have been in the in the last you know couple weeks with this coronavirus shit and i also don't want to make it sound like i'm awful at video games hand to hand or i guess not like hand to hand but just combat shit is where i have a lot of fun i like games like cod but i always liked really stupid shit like i was saying spider-man or fucking god of war like really fantastical shit and I, I, this might sound like a little bit of a cop out or me like finding a reason to justi justify playing video games, but as you know, someone writing a lot, and like trying to create worlds and and make music and shit, I definitely get a lot of fucking inspiration from that stuff. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been fucking playing Kingdom Hearts or like God of War, and I stop because I'm like, oh fuck, I need to take a note on that, like that little like shift in music right there or that was a really interesting plot detail i mean i think people will forever i mean maybe not forever but i think people really don't consider video games to be a legitimate storytelling medium and i'd agree with them to some extent but um god of war had just an amazing story and i had never played any of the other ones i've praised this game on it we're nine episodes in and i've probably talked about it on three different episodes but it, it's really really amazing and i like i it's here's the testament to it before i played it a year before i even picked it up i went down a huge youtube rabbit hole just watching cutscenes because once you just watch one scene you're like this is it's just so compelling and and it really keep draws you in and, and keeps you going and makes you want more and that that's what a good story should do and and more than that it pays it all off so you know fucking chef's kiss on that one really a big fan of that game um man back in the day the lord of the rings video game back on the lord of the rings subject holy fuck man on the ps2 that was a level of fun that is almost unmatched I remember feeling so I remember it so well only because um there was this level my a boss my parents just couldn't beat that was like the ghost king or whatever from Return of the King and and you had to kick his ass and they just got fucking whooped and I somehow god must have been 5 or younger like I somehow clapped this dude and and then I died on the way out. Then you have to escape a collapse and fucking the cave. And I died on the way out. But I just remember feeling really good about myself for that. Um, and that, that game was just amazing. And the movies are amazing. Like I said, last night I watched Fellowship of the Ring with my family. Because uh, my little brother... I don't know if both of them have. not Only Parker watched it with us. But my little brother has not seen those fucking movies. So... It wasn't like we forced him, but we were going to watch something. We're like, Parker, this is, you got to watch this. And I, I, other than Van Helsing, the Hugh Jackman movie, as a kid, I probably had more fucking Lord of the Rings shit than anything else. More Lord of the Rings toys. It, it was, oh my God, I love those fucking movies. And I didn't realize, pausing for a, a big gulp, 
last night, my mom uh, gave me a a one volume edition of the Lord of the Rings books. And I was pretty confused when I fucking opened the table of contents. Let me take a look at this. It's like Fellowship of the Ring, book one, book two, book three, book, f you know, like, so they're all broken up into books, but on the note text, it says often blah, 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 referred to as a trilogy, when in fact it's a single novel, six books, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, I, oh my God, it's a thousand, the story itself is a thousand and eight pages if i remember correctly which is like dude i'm oh my god i'm trying to read fucking 10 pages a day that's so i mean that that's gonna take me 101 days if i go that slow yeah so 10,008 pages but it's really more like 1,143 with all the appendices and the maps and shit um so I'm pretty pumped and it was you know I did want to read it anyways but my mom did make a point to say you know as someone who is writing and trying to build worlds she thinks I'd really appreciate that even if I just read the appendices because fucking the author Tolkien literally I mean he was a linguist so he made languages it's it's insane like the languages you hear in those movies were constructed by the author which is just crazy to me because like if you take something like Game of Thrones there's multiple people behind that like a team of people. Um, and he also just... I mean, Tolkien really created the fantasy genre in a lot of ways. It's pretty unbelievable. So I am super pumped to get into this. And, you know, as we were watching it, there were a number of times where my mom said something about, like, yeah, you know, this was explained really, like, in a lot of detail in the books, but it's just brushed over. Um in this and I, I i mean you also have to understand each one of those movies has like a four hour fucking extended version maybe even longer than that but uh so i wonder how much of that ends up in those but um i mean it, even if you had unlimited seasons on hbo like this is a lot of story to tell it is definitely dense which is you know, partly why I'm so excited to just dive into it, because it's like, I know I'll have this experience, I'll be able to fucking read Lord of the Rings for a while, um, I'm also reading Stephen King on writing at the moment, so, uh, so I, I was just gonna be reading 10 pages of that every day, but as of today, I'm gonna, 20 pages, that's what I'm doing, 10 pages of, uh, excuse me, 10 pages of, Stephen King and 10 pages for Tolkien so I'm, I'm fucking pumped to dude and uh my mom is totally right and then I think I'll take a late uh, take a lot away from it as a writer so whoop whoop and it's dude it's it's the movies too you know the movies are so good and another point she made is that it can be pretty hard at first reading the books because there's so many names and places and a lot of them sound similar but um she did you know bring up that i know the movies well enough to have like a base level understanding of all that shit so god damn it i'm fucking excited to to get into it um then those oh man i really want to watch two towers now but i'm gonna watch john wick 2 tonight because i somehow haven't seen that yet and i fucking love the first one T took notes watching it just minutes in i was like um i need my notepad because this is unreal the storytelling is excellent it, it just seemed like when it came out another a cash grabbing fucking action movie but it's so awesome arguably the, the best action movies in modern times so i'm pretty pumped i'm gonna have to rent it but that is totally okay it's gonna be worth it but uh i'll watch two towers the second lord of the rings soon for sure it's pretty awesome that and he could have done this on purpose i don't think so though but it's pretty awesome that the second one was called two towers um you know i'm, I'm sure he did that on purpose to a certain extent but i don't think he invented the, the two towers just so he could make the title of the second book two towers is i guess what i'm saying if you have not seen those you got you gotta get on it they're long as shit 
I'll give that to you. And if you don't like fantasy shit, then... I mean, you probably won't be into it, but it's so... I am just so in love with those movies that I, I can't imagine someone not being into them. Um, so, oh, dude, you know what else I've been doing? I subscribed to Masterclass. Hans Zimmer's Masterclass. He is a film composer. Let's go through his discography real quick. Let, let's just see what I can get off the top of my head. Um, Lion King, Inception, Interstellar, Dark Knight Trilogy. That's... that's Oh, no, I know I can think of more, but I'm just going to get to it. Yeah, Man of Steel, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, and... Oh, my God, dude. He, he's one of, again, arguably one of the best modern composers. I mean, I'm a huge fan, and I have already, just in the few amount of episodes of that master class, taken so much away. I'm really pumped to keep getting into that, which actually is what I'm about to do right now. So I'm going to take one more fat fucking gulp of this drink and then sign off all right that wasn't fat time after time that song's stuck in my fucking head now all right y'all y'all i will see you not next week but the following on episode motherfucking 10 peace bitches